Oh, we're, we're going to go to the next person on the phone today. Welcome to our Sunday afternoon question and answer program. Please go ahead with your call. Yeah, um, last Friday, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you very well. Please go ahead. All right, last Friday we were talking about um, that there's invisible principalities and how they cannot really look at the evil of this existence. They really just look at God's salvation plan. Um, with that in mind, I'd like to look at uh, Hebrews chapter 12, verses 5 mm. through 10. And then another verse after that. Hebrews chapter 12, 5, yeah, verse. five through 10. Correct. All right. Um, and ye have forgotten the exhortation, which speaketh unto you as unto children. My son, despise not thou the chastening of the Lord, nor faint when thou art rebuked of him. For whom the Lord loveth, he chasteneth and scourgeth every son whom he receiveth. If he endure chastening, God dealeth with you as, as with sons. For what son is he whom the father chasteneth not? But if ye be without chastisement, whereof all are partakers, then are ye bastards and not sons. Furthermore, we have had fathers of our flesh, which corrected us and we gave them reverence. Shall we not much rather be in subjection unto the Father of spirits and live? For they verily for a few days chastened us after their own pleasure, but he for our profit, that we might be partakers of his holiness. Mark chapter 13, verse 32. Mark 13... 32 right. says, But of that day and that hour knoweth no man, no, not the angels which are in heaven, neither the Son, but the Father. Right. Now, now there seems to be uh, two principles that I want to like talk about concerning Mark 13, verse 32 is that there's the father and the son relationship just like we you just read in hebrews but it seems that the son and the human beings and even the principalities have to obey that rule of not looking on another person's evil or not looking upon destruction and like so it seems like the separation here where it says that the the, the father knows the day and the hour, but the son doesn't. Seems to be a principle where, because the son himself is, is like one of those invisible principalities that cannot look on the evil of the world and, and our existence. And then, the, but the father can. Like the father is like, if you had a dad and you did something wrong, he has a right to whip you. You see, so it seems like in Mark 13:32, it says we cannot know the day and the hour because it's a couple of principles that the Christ is an invisible uh, principality, the good angels are an invisible principality, and the true believers, even though we're not invisible, we have to obey the same rules. So we can't look on the destruction in this world, and so somehow. I believe in the future that we cannot even view the end of the world. So therefore, that's why it says that those three, the, the, the men, angels, and, the, and Christ himself cannot watch the end of the world. Well, well so, hold it, hold it, hold it. Yeah. It doesn't say yeah. they cannot watch. Um, uh, I'll, I'll, res I'll respond to this verse. Yeah. And okay. in Mark 13, 32, which, you know, it's one of the more difficult verses in the whole Bible. It says, but of that day and that hour. Now, day and hour are synonyms for judgment. So basically it's saying, but of that judgment knoweth 
No man. Knoweth no man. No, not the angels which are in heaven, neither the Son, but the Father. So it's saying that man does not know. The angels in heaven likewise do not know. And the Son does not know, but the Father does know of the judgment. And the only way to understand this is to uh, find the biblical definition or, or one of the chief biblical definitions for the word know. What does it mean to know judgment? And we find a very helpful verse in Psalm 9. Psalm 9. Uh, anyone looking to understand um, Mark 13, 32 or, or all those scriptures in the New Testament that speak of not knowing the day or hour, you have to go to Psalm 9. And in verse 16, it says, Jehovah is known by the judgment which he executeth. That's how one knows the day and hour, which is a synonym for judgment. You can know the judgment, or, or you can know Jehovah. He is known by the judgment that he executes. And um, if, if anyone were to look up the word know in the Old Testament, it's repeated again and again and again, especially with the Exodus and in the book of Ezekiel, where um, uh, Pharaoh and the Egyptians were cast into the Red Sea. And it says in Exodus 14, in Exodus 14, um, I'll start in verse 16, But lift thou up thy rod, and stretch out thy hand over the sea, and divide it. And the children of Israel shall go on dry ground through the midst of the sea. And I, behold, I will harden the hearts of the Egyptians, and they shall follow them. And I will get me honor upon Pharaoh, and upon all his host, upon his chariots, and upon his horsemen. And the Egyptians shall know that I am Jehovah when I have gotten me honor upon Pharaoh, upon his chariots, and upon his horsemen. You see, they, they know the judgment of God at which point when God collapses the sea upon them and they drown. Then upon their death in drowning in the midst of the sea, they know, they know the judgment of Jehovah. Jehovah is known. By the judgment, he executes or carries out. And uh, it, it's the very reason why it says in Matthew 24, in Matthew 24, that concerning the flood, that they were eating, drinking, marrying, giving in marriage until the day that Noah entered into the ark. Well, Noah was a preacher of righteousness. He was building the ark, warning people for decades. And, and so they would have known intellectually, they would have heard, but notice what God says next in verse 39, and knew not until the flood came and took them all away. Just like the Egyptians, Pharaoh and the Egyptians knew the judgment once the Red Sea collapsed upon them and they experienced it. God carried it out. And the people of the world of Noah's day knew that as they experienced the wrath of God once the flood came. That is the biblical definition that we have to keep in mind when we come to Mark 13, 32, of that judgment, that day and hour, knoweth no man. Well, of course not. God hasn't brought the final judgment of mankind. This is the first century A.D. So man hasn't experienced 
the final judgment. Neither the angels. Neither, neither uh, the angels which are in heaven. The, no one's experienced, not even the fallen angels. Uh, Christ has not yet gone to the cross where Satan would be bound for a thousand years. So he hasn't experienced it. And Jesus himself. Now here, someone can say, oh, but now, say, your, your theory falls apart. Because Jesus, you say, died at the foundation of the world. And at the foundation of the world, he experienced the wrath of God. But it says here, neither the Son. That's right. But remember, at the foundation of the world, Jesus died and rose again and became or was declared to be the Son of God at that point. So by calling Jesus the Son here, God is uh, making a distinction between the two times the rock was smitten or between the two deaths of the Lord Jesus Christ. Yes, he experienced it as God, as the Word, at the foundation of the world, but it was through the rising of the dead, of his death, that it was declared to be the Son. He did not experience that atonement or that atoning death as the Son, but it was after he rose he was declared to be the Son. So Jesus, with the title and name of Son of God, had not yet experienced the wrath of God, and, and he certainly had never experienced the wrath of God in a tableau, in a demonstration. And, and, and so there's a major distinction. And that's why God is calling him the Son. He had not yet gone to the cross, beginning to suffer in the garden for that three days and three nights, and, and uh, thereby um, experiencing God's wrath uh, in, in making it manifest. He had not done that. But the Father knows because the Father did not receive the wrath of God at the foundation of the world. What did the Father do at that point? The Father measures. He measures the cup. He, he's the one pouring out the wrath. He's the one who poured out the wrath of uh, of of his own anger upon the Lord Jesus at the foundation of the world. And in time, in 33 AD, the Father has already experienced the pouring out of the wrath. He's not the one demonstrating or making manifest. And it's the same wrath. It, it's, it's equally the same wrath of God. The difference is not in the measure of wrath being poured out upon the Lord Jesus at the cross. The difference is that Christ was not bearing sins, making payment for them at the cross. So the Father knows the wrath that he will pour out, the, the punishment for the wicked man, the punishment for Satan, the punishment for the Son that he has yet to experience what will soon experience at the cross because the Father's already experienced it as the, the one uh, who, who is administering it. And, and so now we have the proper Bible understanding of Mark 13, 32. It has nothing to do, absolutely nothing to do with intellectual understanding of time and judgment or anything along those lines. It has to do with experiencing the wrath of God. But thank you very much.